Jesus. That's right. We started a new year today. Hey. I love you. <laughs> Yeah. 
explain more. But I thought this would be a neat idea for us to try. What you're supposed to do is take your little prayer rock and put it in your pillowcase. And then that way when you lay down at night, that little rock's going to tap you on the head and it's going to remind you to say your prayer. Or maybe when you wake up in the morning, you're going to feel it. And it will remind you to pray. So I want you to take one of these. Don't put them in your mouth, my little ones. Give it to mom or daddy. But this is a little prayer rock, and it has a little thing with it to talk to you about prayer. And it's going to help remind you to pray. Because sometimes we do make promises, and then we just forget. We don't mean to break them. We just forget. <coughs>
certificate year to the people, uh, those that have participated in our read through the Bible in a year and have turned their cards back in. Some uh, uh, may have participated that didn't do that. That's all right. So, uh, whatever your choice is. But those that did turn their cards back in and did read through the Bible in a year. And my understanding is some have done this for several years. And I say praise the Lord for that. Amen. That will systematically read through God's Word in its entirety in the run of a year. Uh, I guarantee you if I were to ask some of these to uh, uh, make a statement, they'd probably tell me that they've seen something else this year they haven't seen in the previous year. Amen. I know I always do. Amen. But I'd like to start out with that. Can you join in? What? He's going on up here. Yeah, if I can get him out, you got to come get him. Praise the Lord. Ninth year. Well, praise the Lord. That's what it is.
Well, praise the Lord. I heard others say they didn't get through this year, but they didn't get, just chose not to participate in that program. That's fine. Whatever you choose to do. But uh, it would be good for you to learn. Listen to me. Every one of you tell you that you up here. And I can tell you from personal experience, it would do good for you to deliberately read through the Bible from beginning to end. Not just skipping around. From beginning to end. And see it all. And then you'll learn to tie it back together in reference. But I again say thank you to each of you that accomplished this this year. What a wonderful thing. Amen. All right. Now then. Yeah. Well, praise the Lord. I mean, my wife would like to be talking about that. 
But it, it can happen just that quick. But listen to me. This is your church. So it's not just the preacher's church. It ain't just these old gray people's church. This is your church. And I want you young people back there, I want you young people over here, I want you young people up here to embrace the actions and the ongoing of this church. This is your church. Dogwood Hill is your church and your responsibility to upkeep, your responsibility to attend. Would I ask you this morning if you would do me a favor? If any of you presently have these things on with texting, would you please turn them off? And just, I'm not asking you to pay attention to a long time to the Word of God. But if you are, please, don't do that. Please, I ask you. Look down in Isaiah 55. I said I wanted us to make a commitment of God. I said this morning that I wanted us to make commitments unto ourselves. I said this morning that I wanted our young people to take ownership, ownership of this church and its work and the kingdom of God. You realize here in Isaiah 55 and verse 6 it says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Hey, would you listen to verse 7? Would you listen to verse 7? Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And listen, you think he's talking about, well, they're talking about unsaved people, preacher. Listen to the next part of this verse right here. And let him return unto the Lord. Isaiah's scripture here is addressed to the church family. It says, and let him return unto the Lord, and we will have mercy on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon us. Folks, I want you to know today that we as Christians, and if I were to ask you to raise your hand this morning, by far, I would say the largest percentage of people that are present here are professed Christians. Men, women, boys, and girls. They said they have given Jesus their heart. They said that God is their God. Jesus is their Lord. And their name is on a church roll somewhere. I want to tell you today upon the authority of God's Word, it's more important than just having your name on a church roll. It's important what we do on a daily basis to serve God. Amen? Amen. It's important that we keep up the kingdom work of God. If we're making a statement with our living, I thought Wayne was going to take over my text this morning in our Sunday school class. It's important that people see us live for Jesus. Amen. I look here into you that are college age. I look here into you that is in your high school age. It's important today for what you approve as you being a professed Christian. It's important today of what you let them see you doing. If you let them see you doing something that leads them astray, then according to Ezekiel of their chapter 33, their blood is on your hands. <laughs> now how many of you all this morning? I'm just going to talk to young people right here for a second. I mean, I'm talking to everyone up here in this church. How would you like to just wash your hands in the bucket of the blood? How would that be? Would you like that? You like that, would you? I would. But what about if it's in the blood of somebody that's close to you? What about if it was the blood of your best friend and his or her blood was on your hands? Well, preacher, how is that pie possible? Spiritually, according to what it says, <coughs> that if we fail to warn an individual, and if we fail to live a life that is sure before them, then their blood gets on our hands. Over oh, in Ezekiel 33. Let me tell you what, friend. When we became a Christian, we became a watchman. We became a person that is responsible for those around us. And the Bible says here in Isaiah 55, in verse 6 and 7, it said, Let us seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. And there will come a time in some people's lives that are church members, preachers, deacons, Sunday school teachers, they have been so rebellious to the will of God that God will withdraw himself from them. Now, folks, I want to tell you, a dangerous thing today is to get to the point in life when God withdraws himself from you and no longer has communion with you. No longer there do you go read his word like what these and come up and got these certificates today. 
but you barely, and rarely read God's Word. And you rarely, rarely talk to Him in prayer. That's our communication ability with God and the instrument that we use to talk to God and Him talk to us. Uh, he, we talk to Him verbally and we cry out to Him. He cries out unto us through His divine Word. When's the last time you picked up your Bible and held it there and really read God's Word with the intention of receiving the message? If we read a little further here in the Scripture this morning, uh, the Bible says in verse 8, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. It says, listen to me, friend, as we look at them two verses right there, that means today, just because we approve something, just because our society today has approved there of things that is uncommonly and things that is disapproved by the Word of God, just because society today says it's all right to be, to be promiscuous, or just because society today says that absence is not required. I don't want to tell you from the authority of God's Word. That don't change His Word not one little bit. Can I get an amen from the back? Just because we live in a day when their boys and girls feels like it's not required for them to remain pure doesn't change the fact that God says that we are to be pure. Just because today that society says that social drinking is no harm let me tell you, the Bible says that we are to abstain from the appearance of evil. Amen. There, when an individual, listen to me, you don't hear this preach much in Baptist churches anymore. And I ain't trying to glorify the name of Jimmy. I'm trying to glorify the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. the very Son of God. He says no, and he still says no. Amen. It's not all right for a Christian <laughs> to be involved in a lottery. That's gambling. And let me tell you, God don't approve gambling. I tell you, from the authority of His Word today, we need to understand living a Christian life. The Bible says straight is the gate and narrow is the way. Amen. We've broadened it. I don't have to worry about it, preacher. Everybody's doing it. While the churches are approving it now, we're trying to improve this year alternative lifestyle to the point that the Baptist denomination is saying that we should uh, approve these type of folks coming and being a member of our church family. And folks, I'm not saying that these folks are not loving people. I'm not saying these folks there are people that should be cast out and put on an island somewhere. But I am telling you there, according to God's word, sin is sin and it's to be repented of. And God ain't made no mistakes. I let me tell you, it's as much a lust of the flesh as drinking or, or, or hormongering or, or doing anything else like into that. Folks, there is no alternative lifestyle. God says it's absolutely uh, not into His will. But society is saying, it's okay. Young people, I pray for you. I pray for you. You know what? I've been less than 10 years all of y'all will probably be married. Be finished college. Be married. Some of you will already have children. What do you want them to be raised in? What kind of children do you want to have? You say, preacher, why are you picking on us? I look at everyone else straight in the eye and say, because I love you. Mm -hmm. And I mean that for all my heart. Mm -hmm. I truly feel for you. And I fear for you having to grow up in a society that you've grown up in. I thank God for the mama that you got that will keep you in the house of God. I thank God for mamas and daddies that will stay up. I thank God for mamas and daddies that will still grab a hold of you and pray for you. But what about these children caring about me? What about these children that don't have a mom and daddy that cares enough to pray for them? What about these children that don't have a mom and daddy that have stayed at home and raised them? What about these children that mom and daddy's drunk or on drug abuse or they have abused them physically and mentally and spiritually? What about them babies? Do we cast them aside? I want to tell you from the authority of God's Word, no, we don't cast them aside. We are to reach out and pull them in and try to nurture them. Lead them to Jesus. That they could have a good lifestyle. 
Amen. The Bible says, Seek you the Lord, while he may be found. He said in verse 8 and 9 that God's ways is greater and higher than our ways. Mm -hmm. Oh, we approve things in our society. We justify what we do by love. Yes. There be some little boy there be sitting in the car somewhere. When I say little boy, he about be 17, 19, or 20 years old. He'll wrap his arms around the girl and say, Honey, I love you. And if you love me, you will respond to my request. Let me tell you, put the authority of God's Word. That ain't God talking. That's the lust of the flesh talking. Yes, we had this lesson, Sunday school lesson this morning, but God wants it to be tied in uh, to the sanctuary to let us know that out here at Dogwood Hill Baptist Church, we still believe in purity and we still believe out there. I saw it one time to be so that there was a church and a school to where people began to wear purity rings. And folks, if we stay faithful uh, to that, that's for the physical body there. But we need to keep ourselves spiritually pure too. We don't need there to prostitute our doctrine and our love for God out there and let uh, the society uh, try to put it. Let me tell you what, this is my Jesus we're talking about and we're not needing to trot on His name. Amen. The Bible says that His thoughts are higher than our thoughts and His ways are higher than our ways. And it says that in verse 10, for as the rain cometh down and the snow from the heavens and returneth not thither, but waters the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud that it may give the seed to the sower and the bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. I want to tell you upon the authority of God's word, these two verses right here are saying, that we need God's Word as much as we need the bread of life. As much as you need a hot dog or a hamburger. As much as you need steak or pork. As much as you need cottage cornbread and fat bite. Let me tell you, and I love that. Y'all know I do. But listen, there ain't nothing that can take care of the soul but the Word of God. You need God's Word. And the Bible says we need to eat it up. And we need to digest it. How can you digest something that you haven't eaten? If you haven't eaten God's Word mentally, you certainly cannot digest it in your soul. It's your responsibility, church friend today, not just to take my Word, but you need God's Word to feed your soul, to direct your path. The Bible says we will make a lamp for our feet and a light for our faith path that we will hide His Word in our heart that we're not sin against God. We need the Word of God. <coughs> God causes it uh, to come down in the minds of men as He causes rain and snow to come down and waters the earth and earth bring forth seed. God put His Word in the minds of men that we could have the Word of God. We need it. So, so shall my Word be that goeth out of the, my mouth, it shall not return to me void. God ain't just out there holler to hear yourself holler. God loves you. He loves you so much that He gave His only begotten Son to whoever believe in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. It says, His word not turn on Him void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send him. Has God sent you a love letter lately? He sure has. It's called this old King James Version of God's Word. Amen. i tell you what's true. And that's important too, young people, older people. Hey, some of you hold different versions of the Bible. You better be careful what you hold in your hand. We read over there in 2 John this morning that we're not to wish God's speed on anything that denies the doctrine of this Word of God. We're not even to say, go forward. We are to ask it. We're not even to give it our blessing there. We are to talk against it. Let me tell you what, folks. We better take a stronger stand in 2012. We're fixing to get a lot more shoved down in our throat and cause us there uh, to move away from the doctrine of God. We need to stand like we got a four before strapped to our backside there and not bend to the will of man, but only bow to the will of God. 
this last two verses of this chapter 55 of Isaiah. Mm. For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. This is comforting to a Christian this morning. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn, listen to this, this year's where a Christian out here just has himself a running spell. I mean, this is where we say, Hallelujah, this glory of God. Y'all know I love Psalm 118 24. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad it is. Psalm 55 and verse 13 says, Instead of the thorn shall come up the fig tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Oh, I say glory to God this morning. I'm glad today that the thorns that used to grow in the life of Jimmy Floyd don't grow no more. I'm glad today, hallelujah, to the name of the Lord, and the briars that used to come up in the life of Jimmy Floyd, they don't come up no more. We don't water them kinds of plants no more. And the Holy Spirit of God is stronger than any uh, uh, killing agent that mankind has ever dared uh, uh, de de devised. I want to tell you upon the authority of God's Word, you want to get your, you let the Word of God get into your life. Amen. Amen. You digest it. Read it. Live it. Enjoy it. I went through the, I like to go through McDonald's. I probably go through there a couple of times, maybe three times a week. Get me a senior coffee and a sausage and egg on the bun. Boy, that's good. I get up there at the table. And it's just uh, this little black lady. She's about this tall. She's shorter than me. She sure is vertically challenged. And I can say, she knows what I'm going to say when I get up there. I'll tell her, praise be the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for giving me that sandwich. And she'll just about jump with joy. She just loves to hear the name of Jesus be praised. And she'll just about jump with joy. And then I'll tell her, have a blessed day in Jesus. And hey, she's standing, y'all don't get her in trouble now. Uh, she said, you too, brother. I like that. I tell you, folks, people want to be open with the perfection of Jesus Christ as their Savior. But folks, they're limited a lot in our uh, businesses today. They're not allowed to say, have a blessed day in the Lord. They're not allowed to say, Merry Christmas. But they want to say But they're dictators. It's going to get worse, young ones. I really meant what I said a while ago when I said, I feel for your, your children, my, your, your mama and dad and grandbabies. I feel for them what they're going to have to go through. I really do. But guess what? God is greater than our circumstances. Would y'all grab a hold of another verse with me this morning? <coughs> greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen. Satan ain't got a chance. Right. He's fighting hard because he's already lost. He knows where he's going to be cast one day according to the Word of God. Jesus himself has the keys. By the way, he didn't have to go to hell to get them. There's some doctor or belief, belief uh, will teach you that he had to go to hell then when he went down into the belly of the earth then when he was resurrected to get the, he, the, the very keys of uh, hell itself. Let me tell you what's the truth. Uh, the one that made those things ain't, ain't got to get no keys. He owns it all in the beginning, from the very beginning of time. Listen to me, hell was not created for mankind. It was created there for the devil and his angels because they willfully disobeyed God himself. Let me tell you what, if you go there, you go there as an intruder. But let me tell you what's true. You won't ever feel. I've heard people talking about having parties in hell. I find no biblical scripture that hell is going to be a party. All I ever find that hell is going to be is going to be gnashing of teeth and it's going to be wailing and crying and just hollering. I mean, that's eternal. That's what hell is all about. Listen to me. I quietly listen. I promise you I will. Listen to me. You that are living a life there and you are a Christian, your name is on the church Lord. You said you've been born again. And you're telling somebody out here around you, it's all right to go to hell. I don't understand that. I don't understand that. I don't care if a Jehovah Witness comes up to your door. Take advantage right then, like what Brother Wayne said this morning in our Sunday school class. Take an advantage right then. To break it in the bread of life, you can't think of nothing else. Turn over to John 3, 16 and ask them to read it in your Bible because it ain't in there and they don't believe that God gave His only begotten Son, Jesus there to die for their sin. 
They don't believe it. Open their Bible and look at it. If you can't do nothing else, you testify that to them. They may not have nobody else to tell them. Don't run them off. Learn the Word of God where you can talk to them and share the very plain way of salvation. Study, the Bible says, study to shoot thyself approved unto God a work that thee not be ashamed. Rightly divided the word of truth. Friends, this is the first Sunday of our new year gathered together. I'm probably sitting in a congregation of people that majority of you, or maybe all of you, would even say, I've been saved, preacher. I've been saved. I've given my heart and life to Jesus. Well, then I want to ask you, friend, this morning, are you comfortable with how you live? Have you made that commitment to God that you will abstain from the appearance of it and that you will glorify His name? Well, Prince, you don't know what it is. I'm young, and, and, and I just can't uh, I, I, I just can't embarrass myself by that. He says, you'd be ashamed before I me mean, before man, I'll be ashamed of you before God. It ain't no embarrassment. What did Tina say a while ago that wanted them for in the grocery store aisle? She needed prayer right here. I was going to say, let's pray. I bet that kind of shocked Tina a little bit. With me. But guess what? I bow my head and pray. I'd be proud of anybody to pray for me anywhere they go. Amen. I'm dead serious. I was one time driving to me. I probably told you all this, driving to one of my drivers. Down there, if anybody knew about that at that time, they'd probably fired me. weren't worried about it, not one bit. I'd been talking to that man. He'd been talking to me about Jesus. He was of another denomination that said he, he didn't know he should be born again thing that I've been talking about. I was sitting right there at McDonald's at the old Third Avenue location, just uh, closed up and gone right now. He, uh, tears began to come well up in his eyes. And he said, Jimmy, how do I come to know this Jesus? I said, well, brother, let's pray about it right now. We bowed our heads at McDonald's sitting right there. And he gave his heart and life to Jesus. And to my knowledge of last knowing him, even in the recent months, uh, he's still living for Jesus. Right over there outside of Anna, I want to tell you when the authority of God's word, the Bible says here in Ephesians uh, uh, chapter 55, verse 6, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, and while that he is near. Listen to me, friend. When God's dealing with your heart, that's the time to pray. Right then. Would you bow your head and pray? Maybe you're here this morning. Maybe you're here this morning and you know that you need to get closer to God. You know beyond a shadow of that that you need to do some things to straighten some things out. Maybe you just need this old preacher to say, Preacher, would you pray for me? I promise you I'll not go to you, but I will pray for you. And don't worry about what people think. You better get concerned about what God knows. Now, every eye is closed. I'm looking around. Every eye is closed. Thank you. Please, for the price you know, children, close your eyes. Thank you. You're here this morning. And you feel like you need the prayers of this very church family. Would you just lift your hand and say, Preacher, I need prayer for this church family. Would you just lift them up? Amen. Amen. Many hands go up. God knows. God knows. Amen. Thank you.
God, I really want to commit my life in a greater way this year than I did in year past. God, I don't believe in your resolutions, but I sure do believe in making commitments to you. God, you know the things that I've said to you, dear oh Lord, that I want to do this coming year. And God, that I've asked you for leadership and the Holy Spirit, that I can be a better person, a better man, a better dad, a better husband, a better pastor. God, a better servant of you. God, I pray that you help me have a servant's attitude. Help me, dear God, to have an obedient servant's attitude. Lord, that I may be obedient unto you. God, I cry unto you right now on behalf of this church family. Now, God, as we sing this hymn of invitation, God, you know the hearts of everyone. Father, I pray that you'd help realize people that realize that they get renewed there in the altar of God. And, Lord, that your name gets glorified by their moving out. Father, I pray that you'd move upon them this morning, that your name would be lifted up. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Watch your hymn of invitation, brother.